you look at uh, who owns this constitution, it clearly says the first sentence on the preamble of the constitution says we nations, nationalities and peoples. Clearly declaring that this constitution belong to the nations, nationalities and peoples of this country. Federalism Saratu Kulum Bir 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 Savoch Bandinatamo Land Alama Land Agarai Yemasan Pono Nagan. For the first time in history, Ethiopia has been talking about the achievements of the economy. Ethiopia is Africa's oldest independent country. It is home for multi-ethnic groups with varying cultures, languages, religions, and other identities. In the past, its over 80 nations, nationalities, and peoples were not properly managed, let alone enjoying equal rights. The situation had forced them to engage in continuous peaceful and armed struggle. The question of having accommodating diversity is not something that have merged just a few decades ago but it is something which was there almost throughout our history question of managing diversity um, but in 1960s actually it uh, it has been boiling and then it, it reached at very high level and uh, unfortunately, when it came to during 1970, the dimension of the question of ethnic questions, the, the nation nationalities questions, have been, so to say, reversed for a while. For the long period of uh, Ethiopian history, uh, the diverse Ethiopian nations and nationalities uh, had been living under harsh kind of oppression, social misery, and bad governance in any form of it, in any sense of it as well. Uh, therefore, it is difficult to illustrate, to underscore what we can have uh, in the documents uh, in a short time as this kind of what is good is to just generally remark that uh, the political questions, people, uh, especially the Ethiopian nations and the nationalities and the peoples, first had been of diverse uh, nature, but as a general remark I can put one major uh, thing, that political problems, economic misery can be resolved by uh, good governance that was absent in any form of uh, Ethiopian uh, political systems before the current regime. Historically, Ethiopia has passed through different governmental systems, one of which was a feudal system which serves a very few people at the top at the expense of the majority. Disappointed with the system, the nations, nationalities and the peoples of Ethiopia had continued questioning their political social and economic rights. It was accompanied by the Ethiopian students' movements, especially that of the Addis Ababa University. The uh, students were uh, uh, very much involved. We, as students, uh, tried to uh, spearhead a uh, new, innovative way of thinking. <laughs> Students' movement have, in one way or the other, rooted in, uh, in, in, in the questions that have been raised with regard to nations' nationalities in 1960s and so on, so on during the imperial regime itself. Um, of course, one of the big uh, slogans during that time was land for the tillers. Mm -hmm. um, 
But what does that mean? If you carefully look into it, and if you look at it from uh, as history in this process, uh, most of the students who were at that time at the forefront of this question have at the same time that element of addressing this question. Mm, that is why, um, for instance, the uh, EPRDF, the now ruling party of the country, if you look at the history of that, uh, the, this party and this political power, uh, most of uh, its leaders, most of its ideologies have very highly linked to this, those questions. Unfortunately, the questions of the Ethiopian students did not get positive response. The situation fueled the anger of nations, nationalities and peoples of Ethiopia. As a result, the issue became a big political agenda in the history of the Zen Ethiopian politics. During the making of the revised 1955 constitution, uh, that actually um, revised the 1931 constitution, the first, the first ever written constitution that we had, it was one of the agenda that have been discussed at least at the expert level, not at, at <laughs> higher political level. Then uh, this question have been also again raised even during the uh, after the military regime actually the military hijacked the whole revolution during 1974 and so on. So, was it on on the table? Yes, you can see from uh, the the political powers that have emerged during 1960s. Uh, if you look at it, I don't think there is a single political party during uh, the, the revolution that actually didn't discuss, at least to the minimum, the question of how to address that issue, the issue of uh, the rights uh, to self-rule, self-administration, right to autonomy, right to culture, right to language, and so on and so on. The Derg regime, which came to power in 1974, also failed to answer the long-standing questions of Ethiopian nations, nationalities and peoples. And instead of addressing their questions, the Derg regime characterized by the highly militarized regimes in Africa. After carefully understanding the situation, many political parties who had been struggling peacefully started armed struggle. The succession of the feudal order was a military heavy hand at the same time which didn't already respond to the popular questions. Therefore, the feudal regime had several challenges from the Ethiopian people, especially from the students and the leftist political groups who uh, seriously challenged and finally which gave birth to the revolution but the revolution was hijacked and which didn't respond to the uh, popular questions to the po political questions after 17 years of armed struggle the regime of communist Mangistu Haile Mariam was ousted by EPRDF it is after 1974 that this freedom fighters in different corners of this country have begun to fight um, violently against the regime. Then when, when the Derg regime fall, the country where actually, the country was at crossroad. Either probably we had uh, a very best scenario just cross the border in Somalia where uh, the country totally collapsed, uh, become uh, stateless and remain there. So one, one, one of uh, the choice at, at that time we had probably is like um, 
having the faith of Somalia. The EPRDF, when it came to power in 1991, um, immediately, immediately called every political power that really say, I have a stake in the affair of this country. It was a time when uh, more than 17 rebel movements, armed rebel movements, were fighting with the regime, in the, uh, the regime immediately fought. So it, is, it began with the question of uh, calling for, uh, for uh, reconciliation calling for uh, how to move this country forward. <clears throat> and if you look at that history during 1990s, what was on the, on the table when all these political powers called to the, to the round table, discussed the affair, the biggest agenda they raised is are we now ready as a country to answer our long-standing question of our self-determination, of our self-administration, of our um, language, our culture? Is the new Ethiopia after this going to accept this? That was the, one of the biggest agenda. So, um, fortunately, most of uh, the power that the political power that came to power to 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 the negotiating table actually says yes. In December 8, 1994, the nations, nationalities, and peoples of Ethiopia, through their elected representatives ratified the constitution of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. What's novel about the Constitution, among other things, is that it, it welcomes diversity. Um, so it sees diversity as a source of strength, not a weakness, not something that's a liability and something that should check, much less get rid of. To the extent that um, diversity in all its dimensions is freely and by and large equally accommodated, I think uh, all groups should feel at home. The long-time questions of Ethiopian nations, nationalities and peoples are properly answered in the constitution. The system which uh, already uh, governed the Ethiopian peoples, especially the nations, nationalities and peoples in general, can be addressed in many ways. Question number one, what kind of constitution governed these people in the pre-1991 period? Was it the question, the constitution of their own making? What they said yes for it? What already the political parties, especially for example the uh, uh, EPRDF for example, brought this kind of major issues and finally addressed to the people and finally involved in the activities of such and finally involved the mass uh, corners of all different nations and nationalities. In the end, as much as the possibilities go, the post-1991 period, what you said, the current regime, tried its best, step by step, to handle this problem. Therefore, the first thing is that the, the, the struggle gave constitution. 
and the constitution gives the right of the peoples. And one of the major things I can underline is that the nations and the nationalists and the peoples of Ethiopia, for the first time in the long history of the country, had started to be governed by the constitution of their own making. Where were we yesterday? Where were we the day before yesterday? Where are we today? And where are we headed? 20 years ago, Ethiopia was in a civil war. 20 years ago, the <clears throat> massive human rights violations, an economy that was below zero, This is the kind of Ethiopia that we had. This constitutional setup has today brought about peace in the country. The new system is based on the questions of nations and nationalities. Based on the questions of nations and nationalities, a new constitution has been drafted, has been produced in 1995. It was the result of the big questions raised by nations and nationalities. Right, so it, it has addressed and it is addressing. For Ethiopia, it is not only important, but it is critically important. It is a question of um, keeping the country, the nation, move forward. If any political power really wants to, to, to have a good prospect for this country. Federalism is not only important, but it is critically important, inevitable. Federalism allows groups of people to, uh, to maintain their particularities, their cultural identity. But being together with the other groups, it also brings them into the situation where they can exchange and where they must exchange with, with other groups. Learning from each other, exchanging, uh, and I think this, this creates a dynamic uh, which, which will still be an important push factor for, for development in, the, in this country. We may not copy from others. We use, we introduce or apply what is relevant for the Ethiopian context. So for Ethiopian context, nation-based, language-based, federalism is the appropriate approach. Federalism is the appropriate approach. I would say Ethiopia doesn't have, it, doesn't have another choice. Now the genie is out of the bottle. You cannot reintroduce a central state. I, I, I doubt that. Uh, the people have understood that they belong to groups and they are still constituting this group. If you take uh, the Oromo region, they, it has such a diversity within itself and still all together they are different uh, from, from Amhara region. So I think this is, a, this is a, something which has, a process which has started and again I, I assume that the urbanization process Will, will enhance this, this whole development in that everyone in, in Addis Ababa will say, I am from that and that region. And bringing the assets and the features of that culture into the big, big, big mold uh, of, of the urban center. I, 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 see, I, I do not see Ethiopia going back to a, to a more centralized state. We tried otherwise in the past, in our history by saying, well, we have to adopt a kind of very unitary system, uh, just one country, one people, okay? one nation, one language, and so on and so on. That thesis has already tested, and we have seen it that a thesis of 
one country, one language um, has failed. And the reason why that thesis has failed is because we are multi-ethnic, um, multicultural, multilinguistic, and therefore we need to have a system that really accommodate all this. And the only system that can accommodate this is federalism. Going through many hard times, Ethiopian nations, nationalities and peoples manage to see light at the end of the tunnel. Peace, democracy and development are well in progress. The country's system of federalism is also growing fast, showing its unique feature to the world. Ethiopia is still a, an emerging federation. It's uh, been around, been federal for uh, under 20 years, really, um, and uh, it's come a long way. We feel most uh, experts who follow federalism and visit Ethiopia feel that uh, when you look at the starting point of the federal system in Ethiopia, the starting point being coming out of a very long civil war, coming out of long traditions of different phases of high degrees of centralization, very low levels of capacity uh, administratively, economically, low levels of infrastructure, etc. Um, compared to the early mid-90s, uh, Ethiopia's uh, federal system has, been, uh, has come, come very far. Today, Ethiopia is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. To ensure fair distribution and the utilization of resources among its nations, nationalities and peoples, the government is in the process developing all regions proportionally. This time around, all citizens across the regional states have access to education, health and other facilities. <laughs> I started elementary education in 1982 during the Derby team. At that time, I was the only student from our farm. Going to school was not well known at that time. Unlike the children of rich and royal family, children of pastoralists have no access to education in Afar during that time. But today, things are totally changed. We have many elementary and secondary schools in our region. Our children have access to school. To further strengthen unity in diversity, Ethiopia celebrates nations, nationalities and people's day in December every year. <laughs> Nations, Nationalities and People's Day is our national day. When we celebrate this day every year, it conveys message for all Ethiopians. It has huge potential to strengthen national consensus and unity in diversity. It promotes culture, strengthens harmony and understanding among nations, nationalities and peoples of Ethiopia. Above all, it helps us to understand constitution more. The issues of uh, nations and nationalities is uh, getting maturity from time to time. People have got awareness. Um, there is um, individual awareness and uh, there is group awareness. And uh, after this awareness, people are, uh, have started managing their situations with all the awareness they have. And at the same time, they are also getting awareness of others. So these are important steps. So uh, I can say from time to time, emotional intelligence advances. When emotional intelligence advances, growth is, becomes sustainable, development becomes sustainable, and uh, democracy becomes sustainable. Celebration of uh, nations, nationalities, and peoples is uh, one of the important aspects of promoting unity. Of course, you are showing your uh, different culture, your, your, you are showing your different cultural instruments on those events and so on, so on, but you are at the same time saying that all this belongs to this country. That is the most important thing. <laughs>